All right, we're gonna test a few items. Ice cube. Beers. Whoop. Capri Suns, water. And we'll throw this in here, see if it freezes it. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Motoring Adventures YouTube channel. I'm Preston. A few months ago, our portable refrigerator, the Massimo E-Cooler 62L, uh, crapped out on us. So I went looking for a suitable replacement and found one very similar to it, but for a lot better price. That's made by Bouge RV. So today I'm going to open up for the first time the portable refrigerator by Bouge RV. I would like to note there was a, uh, not sure you can see that little dent in the box there, but hopefully that's uh, no big deal. Looks like it's intact for the most part. What I like about it is it's not quite as tall as the one we had from Massimo. Now this is a 30, 37 or 35 quart. That's what you think it would say on it somewhere. All right, it's got two baskets. Comes with a cutting board, which is supposed to go right here, I believe. Comes with a box here. I'm pretty sure this is your cables. Uh, what's great about this, it's got a dual zone and you can run either side as a refrigerator or a freezer. Uh, this one's slightly smaller because the compressor sits underneath that, uh, but this one's pretty deep. But you can see here it's got a pretty large uh, basket, which is going to be so nice. The Massimo e-cooler didn't have any baskets or anything, so you just loaded it up and it would get extremely heavy. But with this, you can you know, load up half of it, take that out, move the cooler itself. Here's the smaller one for the freezer. Got a nice little uh, weather seal around there. The bottle opener here on the side. This is about the same handle that the other one used. What's great about it too is it's got this handle and it's on wheels. So, I mean, you can transport it fairly easily like you can many of the, you know, ice coolers. But this is a refrigerator. It's a portable refrigerator. The um, Little cutting board supposed to fit in this little slot here, but it doesn't really stay. Uh, not even upside down, but you know, didn't really buy it for the cutting board, but it is a nice little touch. I mean, you might want to cut up some limes, put in your your tacos, Corona, whatever. This comes with two different. Uh, ways to power it, two different cables. One plugs into your, like a normal power outlet, 110 volt. Now here's the inverter. This would go into your, the cooler, the fridge right here and plug into your normal wall outlet or you have the uh, car's accessory outlet. Now this also has the option to uh, power it with a, a battery. Now the, the Massimo e-cooler came with what I believe is this same exact battery and way of powering it. Now it was kind of cool because you know you could have it completely unplugged and the battery would work but then it was kind of finicky as well as uh, sometimes it, it wouldn't charge it or it would be charging it or when you'd plug it in it would power it but it wouldn't charge. Uh, it was kind of something finicky with the battery itself, but it was a great backup to have. Say you have this plugged into your car's battery overnight and you know, your battery, your car has this shut off feature. Actually, this has a shut off feature to turn this off and not drain your battery completely. But if you have the, the portable battery within it, you know, it will, it acts as a great backup to keep everything chilling. And let's see what else is in here. Just things, an energy guide and a user manual. Now, what I think is one of the greatest features of this, and it's the feature I had on the Massimo e-cooler as well, is that you can run this off of Bluetooth on your phone with an app. Now that's great if you're in a vehicle and like this is in the back of your vehicle and you wanna monitor it or change the temperature in it, you can do that uh, while you're driving. And it, it, I heard it's a little bit easier interface than its own interface here on the side.
can totally tell this is like an Amazon sponsored product. You got Amazon numbers here that you can call and the actual Bouge RV website. And it's nice right here. They give you all the, the operation and temperature uh, control guide. One thing to note also, it has a fuse, place you can access a fuse here and also a place to plug in for solar. One thing to note as well is this even has a drain plug. So in case you need to use this as a ice cooler, you have a way to, to drain that as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into a wall outlet first. Let's see how it runs. All right, now it's plugged into the wall outlet. And we have 81 degrees on the left side and 80 on the right. Now I'm kind of curious, that, do you know it's the left and right side because you can reverse this fairly easily. If you don't like it on that side, you can go on this side. That's pretty useful. <laughs> You're not just stuck opening it one way. Uh, here we go, it denotes which side's left. So left will always refer to the deeper uh, bin or space and R or right will, will refer to the smaller one regardless of which side you have the, the lid on. So one thing you have to understand with these portable refrigerators is that they're not meant to take things from that are warm at room temperature and really chill them down. They work most efficiently when the item's already cold and this has been pre-cooled, like such as the night before you're gonna go on a trip. Uh, it does a really good job of keeping those cool and it will even keep them frozen, frozen goods frozen. Now it can chill things, especially if like the majority of things in there are already cold and then you put in like, you know, buy like a warm bottle of water or something, it will chill that eventually, but that's just not where it's, it reigns supreme is where it's, uh, the stuff is already chilled, does a really good job of keeping things refrigerated and keeping things frozen once they already are. Now, of course, some of that's probably gonna depend too on, you know, environmental factors, you know, where it's being held, if it's being used in direct sunlight. I know when we had the Massimo e-cooler, we, we brought it a lot to our daughter's soccer games. And, you know, we're sitting out in the sun and direct sunlight, you know, 80, 90 degrees. And they didn't seem to work as efficiently in that type of setting. I mean, it was struggling to hold the temperature in like the upper 30s, lower 40s. And that was just a one zone uh, unit. You could freeze things, but it would be the entire thing. <laughs> this one's really nice that it has a dual zone. Really looking forward to taking advantage of that. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug it into uh, using the other uh, outlet here. I'm gonna use it in my portable unit and then also test it out in the Jeep and then see how it fits in the back of the Jeep because that's gonna be kind of crucial. To, I mean, it's here, so I'm gonna use it regardless, but it would be nice. I, I do have plans to maybe get a rack to go on top of things in the cargo area, so. All right, what I have here is a portable power supply. Uh, it's basically an AGM battery inside of a container that's already pre-wired to allow you to connect uh, varying types of devices on it. This is my portable battery box, and I'm going to use the, the other provided, uh, seem to have misplaced it. Turn the power supply on, plug this into the fridge, and plug it in. I do like this, and you can hear it turned on there. I like this uh, plug better than the one I had the Massimo. It was more came straight out. This kind of has a 90 degree, so you can kind of fit it more places. Oh, and we get a F1. We're getting a fault code on the left side. Here, let's unplug this. So that's off. Try plugging it back in. You can see it's dropping. Set to 32. Ah, fault code again. Interesting. Well, it doesn't appear to be working with my portable power supply here, so I'm going to go ahead and try plugging it into the Jeep's uh, power plug. All right, here's a test. It passes with plenty of room, even with the Rough Country tailgate table, it still has a good uh, inch of clearance there. And even on the back side, it is touching at the top of the seat, but where the plug comes out, there's plenty of room there. And on the Jeep, you have this on this side. And what's cool about this is it's not wired for ignition, it's wired all the time for the battery. So let's plug it in here. And 
So far, no fault codes. Oh, that's yeah, giving me a fault code. Hmm, not sure what that is. Okay, I think I may have gotten this thing figured out. I think I just needed to adjust the battery protection on it from high to medium uh, because now it's plugged into the battery, my portable battery, and it appears to be working just fine so far. You see here it's uh, set to medium and it's currently running. The voltage number doesn't match uh, what it's showing on the unit, but it's about one volt off. And here we got 11.2, but it is running. Gonna test a few items. Ice cube, beers, well, Capri Suns, water, and we'll throw this in here and see if it freezes it. I ran this thing uh, over 12 hours overnight last night off of my portable battery and it did good. It, it kept uh, the frozen stuff in the frozen side frozen, the stuff in the refrigerated side, about what the temperature should be. It was within uh, five, plus or minus five degrees. Uh, I did notice the freezer side, uh, I had it set to five degrees and it didn't exactly keep it at five, but it was below freezing enough to keep the frozen stuff frozen. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I did run, switch it over to eco mode overnight so that it wouldn't completely drain the portable battery I have on the power station. It did eventually run out. It ran out, um, I started this at around 7 p.m. last night and it ran out sometime between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. this morning. It had it had turned to a fault cold. I think I, if I would have changed the battery protection to low, which according to the manual, low has a uh, cut in voltage of 10.9 and a cut out of nine volts. I'm not sure if I would have wanted to drain that um, AGM battery down that low. The, the medium is 11.4 volts cut in and 10.1 volts uh, for the cut out voltage. So that's where it, when it dips below that on the input volt rating, not what the, the battery itself says, but what it's detecting the input volt rating to be, that's when it cuts out, which Probably explains why there's some discrepancy, like even on the, the high protection, uh, it ran when the, when the Jeep's engine was idling, but when it was off, it was detecting low input voltage. And I know the, the battery is holding more than, the low cutout for high protection is 11.1 .1 volts. And I know that battery is holding more than that. One of the downsides of this thing is it makes, the, the compressor is not very loud, but it, it rattles. If you don't have a lot of items in there, the baskets tend to rattle. just with the minor vibrations of the compressor. But some of that's to be expected. I think once you get a lot of stuff in there, you're not gonna hear that. And if you have it in a vehicle with road noise and whatnot, you're not gonna hear that. Uh, whether or not you're like sleeping or camping in your vehicle with this, that might become annoying. It, it also might depend on how much stuff we have. I'm gonna take this, uh, put this in the Jeep, load it up. We're gonna do a little uh, grocery run, a little minor grocery run to Costco. And we're gonna test this thing out. One of the coolest things about this uh, fridge is its Bluetooth capability. Like I can sit up here with the cooler back there and check on its, its temperature and change the settings. Like I can go here on the, the right cooler and adjust it from here and it'll adjust it back there. And I love this feature. some frozen stuff here on the frozen side. The meat's not frozen, but put that in there and some craft singles for the refrigerated side. Of course, we've lost some of our cold air here, but I'll be able to keep track and monitor that. Hopefully it'll start cooling down as we get going. Right 
right side, which is the smaller side, is at 39. It's set to 34. And the larger side that's set to 9 is tw currently 28 degrees. But that's still below freezing, so that's good. Hopefully it uh, kicks into high gear now that we're in the Jeep. Got the air conditioning on. And keep in mind, it was sitting out in the hot parking lot uh, with the windows up for the most part. So just the fact that it keeps it cool in those conditions, pretty great. All right, got the fridge unloaded. Everything made it back uh, nice and cold. Uh, it had been about an hour since I left the store and until we got home and got the stuff out of the cooler and into the fridge, our, our home fridge. Uh, but it kept everything uh, really cold, um, as if it was stored in an actual refrigerator. I know that the temperature wasn't reading as low as it was set to, and I was kind of wondering about that. And it, there's kind of like fluctuations between the two sides, like one minute this side is way off, uh, like it, it got up to as high as like in the 30s when the, that side was supposed to be set to seven. Uh, the other side kind of did a similar thing, but it, it I guess it fluctuates, especially when you open it a lot. Um, but I think overall, it really kept everything uh, really cold. I think with everything combined, the, the, the fact that it does keep things cool most of the time, it runs off low power. The compressor is relatively quiet. It's very portable. Like I like that this is, it's not permanently in the Jeep. Like I can just take it out and we can put it in our other vehicle if we want to use it there. And it runs off of, you know, whether it's a home outlet, 110 volt uh, AC, or you're running off your vehicle or portable power station or device. It can run that way. And it's, it is more portable. It has the handle, has the wheels. If it gets really heavy, you're not just stuck holding it. And it has all the functionality of one of the more permanent style portable fridges with the two different sections, the two baskets to help take things in and out a lot easier. Um, it's just overall a very good value. That is my review of the Bouge RV portable refrigerator. Stay tuned as I real world test this out on some future overlanding, off-roading, camping adventures. I'll be taking this along for the ride to see how well it does. If you enjoyed this or found this useful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.